everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and I love doing DIY, making clothes in a seemly but free way. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how I make my birthday dress. This dress has a ruffle shoulder strap design with a bow tie at the back. It's also kind of backless design dress. That's why it's not only pretty but also a big sexy So the perfect combination for the dress I want to wear on my birthday That's why I really hope you guys will like it and check it out And let's get started! Here's the look of the dress that I want to make I divide it into two parts The top by the parts and the skirt part I started making the pattern for the dress first To make the top by the pattern I draw a rectangle with 18 cm length, which is the length from a bow to below my breast, and 21 cm width, which is a quarter of my bust side plus 1 cm. From the top of one length line, I mark at 12 cm on the top with line next to it. It's the half of my inside shoulder, where the position of the shoulder strap will be. From another end of the top with line, I mark down on the length line 7 cm which is a wick from above the bread to the middle of the bread. It will be the lowest position of the sleeve. Then connect two marks together. Based on it, I draw a slightly curved line to finish the sleeve line of the front bodice. From the end of the length line, I mark at 18.5 cm on the width line next to it. It's a quarter of my under bust side plus 1 cm. Then connect this mark to the end of the sleeve line to finish the side line of the front pattern. From the top of the sleeve line, I draw a straight line to cut another width line. After that, I draw another straight line 4cm away from it. 4cm is the width of the shoulder strap that I want. So you can see three different parts of the front bodice. After cutting, I make another piece like this. So the front bodice of the dress will be combined from these pieces like this. These two pieces will be the shoulder strap part. Combine two middle pieces together to become the center part of the front bodice. Then adding seam allowance for them later. Moving to the back bodice, I use the side pattern to copy the side line first. After that, I draw a horizontal line going through the top of the side line. Then I keep drawing another horizontal line at 6cm under the first one. It's the width of the tie at the back of the thread that I want, plus 2cm for seam allowance. But at the top of this line, I draw a curved line to connect it to the end of the side line. After cutting, I cut a rectangle with 6cm length to make the length of the back bodice pattern longer for the tie. The total length of my back bodice pattern is around 70cm. To make the pocket pattern, I cut a rectangle with 20cm width and 30cm length. On one length line, I mark in the middle foot, then drawing a curved line from this mark to one end of the other lane line and here's the pocket pattern after cutting now let's start making this dress I use two and a half meters of cotton fabric in floral printing for this DIY I start making the top bodice of the dress first to make the ruffle part of the shoulder strap I cut a long rectangle with eight and a half centimeter width which is the width of the ruffle part that I want plus one and a half centimeter for seam allowance an 80 cm length, which is two times the length of the shoulder strap from the front to the back. I fold the rectangle in half by the length line foot. At two ends of the rectangle, I mark down on the width line 3 cm. So the left over of the width line will be 4.5 cm, which is the width of the ruffle part at the end of the shoulder strap plus 1.5 cm for seam allowance. After that, I mark in the middle of the folding rectangle foot. Then connect this mark to the one on the width line I made before that. Based on it, I draw a slightly curved line to make it nicer. After cutting, I finish it by folding the end fabric inside two times with a half centimeter each time and sewing. On the other side of the fabric, I make a loose seam foot. 
then I create the gathering fabric there later. The final width of the gathering fabric will be 40 cm, which is the length of the shoulder strap from the front to the back. I cut another rectangle with 6 cm width, which is the width of the shoulder strap that I want, plus 2 cm for seam allowance, and 40 cm length, which is the length of the shoulder strap from the front to the back. It's also the same length as the ruffle part that I just finished. I connect the ruffle part to one side of the rectangle foot. After sewing, I cut another rectangle with the same side to connect to the other side of the ruffle part. So the ruffle part will be in the middle between them. However, I keep 20 cm open, which is the length of the center part of the front padded. After sewing, I put on the ruffle inside to connect the other side of the two rectangles together. However, keep around 30 cm open. After sewing, I upside the shoulder strap to hide on the seam inside. Don't forget to iron to make it nicer. Here are two pieces of the tie and the side part of the padded. I connect them together at the side line first. Then I connect two pieces of them together by the bing foot. After that, from the top of the side line, I mark at 11 cm on the top of the tie. It will be the position of the shoulder strap at the back of the bodice. So I can add the end of the shoulder strap to there later. Make sure the shoulder strap will be in between two pieces of the ties then sewing to connect them on together. After upside it, you the iron to make it nicer. At the other side of the side part, I connect two pieces together by overlocking. Now I'm connecting the other end of the shoulder strap to the side part. I connect the side part to one piece of the shoulder strap first. Then I connect another piece of the shoulder strap to them later. Make sure the side part should be in the middle between two pieces. Then sewing to connect them on together. And here's the third part of the top bodice, making one more piece like this for two sides of the top bodice. After cutting two pieces of the center part, I connect them together on one width line.
after sewing and make an under stitching seam on the inside piece of the center part. Then I overlock the rest of the center part to keep two pieces together. Now I'm connecting two lane lines of the center part to two side part of the top bodice that I just finished before. I connect it to the inside piece of the shoulder strap first. Then I move the other piece of the shoulder strap over the ruffle part and the back part to connect to the first piece where I just made the first seam there before. By doing that, after sewing, you can turn them inside out to hide on the seam inside. After that, I connect two pieces at the end of the top bodice together. And we finish the top bodice of the dress. Moving to the skirt parts of the dress, I cut a big rectangle with 60cm length, which is the length of the skirt minus the length of the ruffle part plus 2cm for seam allowance, and 92cm width, which is my hip side. At the top width line, I mark down on the length line 9cm, which is the position for the pocket of the dress, then adding one piece of the pocket there later. Doing the same for the other length line. And we will have the front piece of the skirt after sewing. After that, I cut another rectangle with 92cm width, which is my hip side, and also the same with the front piece of the skirt, and 62cm length, which is 2cm longer than the front piece. This 2cm is 2 times the width of the elastic band you will use at the top of the back piece of the skirt. From the top width line, I draw another line at 4cm under it. After that, I fold the top width line inside around a half cm foot then keep folding it to the line just real before and sewing to create a fabric hole there. Make sure the width of the fabric hole is bigger than the width of the elastic band you will use. From the top of the fabric hole, I mark down 8cm on the length line. It will be the position for the pocket. Make sure it's 1cm shorter than the position of the pocket that you make on the front piece of the skirt before. Then adding the pocket there later and doing the same for the other side. I cut an elastic band with 1cm width and 35cm length, which is the half of my under bust side. After putting the elastic band to the fabric hole, sew two ends of the elastic band to two ends of the fabric hole to keep them from moving. Now, I'm connecting the front and the back of the skirt together at two sides. From the top of the pocket, I mark down at 14cm, which is the width of the open part of the pocket where you can put your hand in. Then sew the rest together to create the dip of the pocket. I cut two rectangles with 27cm length, which is the length of the ruffle part of the dread that I want, and 138cm width, which is 1.5 times my hip side. I connect two rectangles together by the length lines to create a circle fabric.
After that, I finish one side of the circle fabric by folding the end fabric inside two times with one centimeter each time and sewing. At the other side of the circle fabric, I make a loose seam first, then I create a gathering fabric there later. The final width of the gathering fabric will be 180cm, which is the same as the width of the top part of the skirt that I just finished before, so you can connect them together later. At the top of the front skirt, I make a loose seam first, then I create a gathering fabric there later. The final width of the gathering fabric will be 37cm, which is the half of my under bust thigh plus 2cm. It's also the same width at the front part of the top bodice, so I can connect them together later. And I finished this DIY. Here's my final result. This is a super pretty dress. I feel so much love when wearing it. I hope you will try to make one for yourself. See you next week.